going on guys chase chase wins.com sunday march the 1st 2020 Whew. god i can't even believe it's already march seems like yesterday i was sitting there saying happy new year man as you get older it just goes by faster and faster and faster so let's get on a recap a couple of announcements some cool stuff that i've been waiting to announce um as far as a little event we're gonna do um and then we'll get you on a free play for Sunday and tell you what we got going on. Sundays are now back to exciting. Sundays are always a good day. We very rarely um, have losing days on Sunday. I think that we've had two losing Sundays um, this entire year so far. And I think that we averaged, I think we had nine losing Sundays all of 2019. None of them were big losing Sundays, just you know, somewhere we just didn't turn profit. So Sundays are always a good day in that regard, um, especially when you have multiple sports because the odds makers tend to focus on one thing versus the other. So obviously when the NFL is being played, that's what the main focus is, and they tend to not dig so deep into college basketball or the NBA. Um, obviously once the regular season comes to close in NFL, they start putting a lot more focus on on those sports during Sundays. Um, this time of year, NBA always being kind of the most profound on Sunday because college basketball usually doesn't hold a lot of weight as far as viewership because it's a lot of mid-major teams. Um, not a lot of power conference teams play, and if they do, the matchups really aren't that interesting. Um, you, you might get your one matchup during the day or that evening that is um, – I guess your big deal for the day but other than that it's usually focused around the NBA and then NBC usually has a, a pretty good hockey matchup going on but again that's that there's just not hockey fans like there are basketball or football which is sad because hockey is awesome um but it's exciting for us because of NASCAR. NASCAR is back. We're going into the third race of the season. Fontana, Auto Club 400, and I could not be more excited. This uh, race last year um, was kind of one of Patrick's defining moments. He obviously picked the Daytona 500 winner last year, and then they went in. And I think last year the second race was Phoenix, I want to say, for some reason. And maybe it was Vegas. I don't know. But that's usually always that first four stretch, um, Daytona, Phoenix, Fontana, Vegas, all of those, you know, West Coast tracks. So, but Fontana was his defining moment because he had really ramped up. He had gone from two head-to-heads each week and then predicting the race winner. He had predicted the Daytona 500 winner as well as Phoenix. He had Fontana where he predicted not only the race winner, and I think it was Kyle Busch last year. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, but he also did a separate card because all of the sports books, for some reason, decided to put out top five odds where it was you could choose a driver and you could put it at whatever odds the driver were. So plus 500 plus, you know, 20,000. It didn't matter. And you could also have it to where you wagered to see if they were going to finish in the top five. So if they finish in the top five, you would be able to make money that way versus them not having to win. So what he did was he solidified, and you also would actually get even more if you, you know, if you pick top five, what position they would be in. So he picked an entire top five card and one through five, got every single one of them right and in the right, in the right position. That right there took him off and everybody's like, all right, kid's not playing. That solidified him, and obviously he went on to do amazing things last year throughout the season, obviously predicting who was going to be the um, the race champion. Usually he doesn't do that, or at least from the years that I've known him, until after the fifth race of the season. That allows him to get some multiple winners in there, see what each um, race team is doing with multiple different 
race packages, what they're doing in different types of, you know, super speedways, oval tracks, mile and a half, two miles, things like that. He said that he may be um, picking them after this week. It really just depends on how this week goes as to whether or not he waits until after that fifth race to make his futures predictions. Um, he hasn't gotten one wrong as long as I've known him. So we'll just see. But all of the NASCAR people will get those <clears throat> if you're on the season. Um, if you want 10% off the season, you can get it. That is valid um, through the race tomorrow. The coupon code is NASCAR and the number 10. So N-A-S-C-A-R, all in lowercase, and the number 10. You just enter that on the checkout page when you purchase the NASCAR season. It's $4.99. It's $50 per race card. So if you want the race card for Sunday, it's 50 bucks. It's on the website, and it's going to be 50 bucks every week um, from here until the end. It's $3,400 that you would spend on race cards, and you won't even get the futures predictions with that. Those are strictly for the season members, all-access members, so on and so forth. So if you want it, you can save yourself 10% and instead of spending $3,400, you can spend $450 and get the rest of the season, which he has not lost a single pick on yet. He has given out six picks in total, uh, five premium head-to-heads, one top head-to-head, -head, won all of those, and then he has predicted a race winner in both races so far. A plus 900 winner on Denny Hamlin in week one. And then plus 750 last week on Joey Logano. So race card, the initial race card has been sent to me. Obviously, he's still got final inspection reports. There was some injection issues going on. There has been a crew that has been eliminated from the race. Um, a lot of crew chiefs and stuff are kind of under scrutiny right now. So a lot of reading to do. Race doesn't start till 3.30 Eastern time. I told him that I needed the final draft so I could get it typed up no later than 1 p.m. That way it would be out to the world no later than 1.30, which is two hours prior to the start of the race. He said that his goal was to have it to me no later than noon. So keep that in mind. If you buy the race card early in the day, you'll see last week's picks until it's updated, which you will get an email the second that it's updated. So that's the, um, the announcement for NASCAR. And then, oh, Talladega. Told you guys we were going to have an event at Talladega where myself, Patrick, a couple of our sponsor people that we're going to be working with throughout this merger, um, they're going to be there. We were waiting to see if we were going to get our spot in the infield and plus how many race packages we were going to be able to purchase, um, which would mean tickets to the race, infield passes, which you would be with us, uh, pit passes, uh, driver's quarters passes, which means you get to walk around where all of the drivers, uh, trailers and stuff are, where if there's a, um, a rain delay or pre-race, post-race, that's where they hang out the trailers. Drivers will be walking around. Um, there is rules of what you can and cannot do. You can't just walk up and knock on Jimmy Johnson's door and say, hey, you know, can I hang out with you or can I take a picture? There's times for that, but you'll be rubbing elbows with them. We do have a driver announcement who has agreed to come by our setup at a time during the day and um, do a little meet and greet with myself and, well, it won't literally be for me because I will have already talked to him and everything, but um, for everybody that's with us. We're going to be giving away five of these things, um, three of which are going to be all-inclusive hotels and everything. You will have to pay for the travel. So if you have to fly, if you have to drive, if you have to take an Uber, you are responsible for travel getting to Talladega. But we take care of everything else. Um, you'll have food taken care of the night before the race. Obviously, we'll be providing food the day of the race, drinks, so on and so forth. Um, the you know If you decide to bring like your child if you win, that's fine. We ask for no small children um, as long as they're, you know, 12 13 or above that's fine um there will be alcohol there obviously because you know there will be adults there but i will make personally sure that nothing gets out of hand this will be done by me we will have corporate sponsors there so none of that will be allowed and everybody will be id checked so there won't be any any of that going on so but that is completely your choice, but you have to let me know if there is going to be someone under the age of 21 accompanying you, and I have to approve it first. 
So, um, but yeah, there's that. So we're going to be giving those away. All I'm waiting on is the details of the hotel and everything so I can put it there. We'll be doing those. If you want to get entered, all you have to do is purchase Patrick's NASCAR season, which if you have already done so, you're already entered. So you don't have to worry about that. Drawing will be sometime in the next week. Um, so I'll let everybody know the day prior and then... Obviously, the day of, we'll announce the winners. Um, the two people that won't get the the hotel and the driver um, the driver area passes, you will still get race passes, and it's all weekend passes. So you get all three races if you want to go to them, truck, Xfinity, and the cup race. Um, you will get pit passes for pre-race pit passes, and you will have infield access to come you know, hang with us, but you will not get hotel stay and you won't have the access to go into the, the driver garage area and stuff like that. Those are basically press passes is what they are. So we were limited to those. Um, cause obviously I had to have some for myself and Patrick and then a couple of people that are going to be with us. So we, we actually hit our mark on that one. So there's that. And then final announcement is we have another sponsor going on with that, and it is going to be a sports book. Now, let me tell you this. I am not affiliated with any sports book. I will not be affiliated with any sports book. You will never see a sports book promoted here on my website on anything ever. And I have made it very clear. The particular sports book that I'm going to be doing this with has approached me a dozen different times wanting me to do something with them. And let me tell you something. I bet NASCAR heavy with this book and I eat them alive. So why they would want to do something with me is beyond me, but they want to. So <clears throat> what they asked was, could they be a part of maybe sponsoring an event? We're going to be doing the all-star race this year. And we're also going to be doing the normal 600 race at Charlotte. So they want to get in on that, boost up their NASCAR business. And I just told them, I said, I will not promote you. If somebody personally asked me, Hey, who do you use for NASCAR, you know, as far as an online service? People ask me that every day. I gladly tell them. I'm not shy about it, but you'll never hear me promote it. Like, I'm not even going to say the name yet. Eventually, I'll say it once we do this promotion. But what they did ask is could they have a marketing representative come out and during our tailgate and everything have a banner, a booth, and then basically be giving out vouchers for like $500 or $1,000 like free bonuses, like not match bonuses, free bonuses, like saying, Hey, you sign up, create an account. You don't even have to make a deposit. Boom. You've got a thousand dollars, you know, in your account, there'll be rollover terms. I'm sure. But boom, you've got it, which I was like, dude, if you'll, if you do that for everybody, I'll promote the shit out of you right now because that's awesome. But they would want to do it on a specific event, monitor the amount of people that can get it and like give it to them in person, yada, yada, yada. So I said, yes, you could. So they wanted a price for a buy-in to be able to come do it with us. What we decided was say, hey, you don't need to do that. You take care of if we run another promotion for long-term services for people to get um, one-year all-access passes, lifetime, what, whatever you want. A long-term pass, somebody to be able to purchase it for 50% off, 75% off, 80% off, whatever. And then you pay the difference. How much money will you, you know, kind of accolade for that? And so we talked about it and everything. They gave me a number. I kind of looked at it and said, okay, if we take that number and we put a percentage by everything, how many customers could we take care of? We are going to do another five. And I'm hoping to do this three more times. This is like the last two times we've done this. I thought that we were extremely blessed to be able to do it. It... I didn't think that it was going to happen again, but it's taken off so fast because behind the scenes we're working to get all of this stuff set up to be able to do these public events and get, and build the sport up and build the, you know, obviously the, the way we're winning, we want people interested and betting and enjoying it. And of course, who are they going to do it with? They're going to do it through us. So we'll benefit that way versus, you know, having to make money on the back end because we'll be promoted through what we provide. People now want to get involved because they see how many customers are coming on board and saying, oh, wow, these, these people are winning. Well, we want them to win at NASCAR. How can we get them on something where they can win? Let me go out with them to an event. Let me do it. And then when they win at NASCAR, they'll use their winnings on the online casino or, or something like that. And then eventually we'll make our money back, you know, and it's all word of mouth. They tell their buddies, man, I just want all this on this. Oh, let me set up. 
it all comes back in the end, plus not to mention even if they're paying out, the amount of people that will promote on a site like that just by having members is astronomical. So trust me when I tell you some books don't mind losing. They don't want to lose to everybody and they never will. But like if I set up 50 people right now that went and cleaned them out for $10,000 a piece, they're not going to blink an eye. Because what they get in return from the back end of everything on things that have nothing to do with gambling would surprise you. I looked at one of those business models and I didn't believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. So five more people, guys. Send me an email. Chase at chasewins.com. Let me know. Do you want to get plays for forever? Do you want to get a, a one-year all access? Do you want to get um, next year's NFL and NCAA football for you know 75% off? Let me know. Five people will be chosen tomorrow, Sunday, or it'll probably be today when you watch it. But Sunday, the 1st of March, we are going to do five drawings like we did last Sunday. So five people are going to draw one in the morning, probably 11-ish, do another one at 2, do another one at 5, do another one at 8, and do another one at 11. And that way by midnight, everybody has been you know reached out to. they claim their prize and that way we start a new week with five new long-term winning success stories that will be with us for you know from now until the end so get on that sorry for the long video but just had to get all that out there and i did not feel like making two videos tonight so let's get on a recap and um and again we'll announce who that is i just don't want to do it till closer to the time because i don't want anybody thinking that in any way that I'm affiliated with a sports book that is going, you know, that I'm sending people to and getting something on the back end. This particular sports book has even offered me deals where like, hey, you bring us people, we'll just pay you um, a monthly fee. Like saying, hey, if you're bringing us 100 people a month on average, this is what we'll pay you per month to advertise. And we'll do the same thing. We'll advertise you. And that way you're not making money off of somebody coming in and potentially losing something. Because that's what all these people that typically promote sports books do i know of one person in particular one and all of you guys know him too everybody is it's no secret that him and i are you know are friends um he's the only person i know that will promote a sports book and do advertising deals with him that does not make residuals on the back end Everybody else that you see, they're like, hey, click the link below, use this code, yada, yada, yada. Well, what they're doing is not only are they getting a fee for that, but every time you go in and you lose, they get a percentage of your loss, whether it's a play that they gave or not. I will not be involved in that. They've offered me other deals, and I said, nope. I said, because that's what everybody in the industry does. I don't want anybody thinking that I don't do that, and I'm not going to try to make them believe it. I'm just not even going to be involved. I don't care how much money I could or could not make. So that's why I'm not going to do it. Obviously, the people that are, you know come out and see us, they'll see it. But again, they'll be affiliated with us for the day. But I mean, that's really it. And what the, what we're getting in return is they're you know donating X amount of money to allow us to sell packages at. You know what would be an extreme loss for us that they're going to make up the difference for so that basically we can break even but bring people on long term and that's just going to keep growing the long term community um, and those people were not trying to keep you know make money off of continuing to sell 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 it's like hey come in buy this package and then win 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 over the course of time they'll be losing days they'll be losing weeks but over the course of a year, two years, three years, how many people have you told when you've gone out there and taken a $1,000 bankroll and turned it into well over 10 at the end of the year or times that by 10 based on what your bankroll is? So I'm excited to be able to do this. And the other partners that, that have reached out and were in talks about them, about stuff for one more for the, um, the All-Star Race besides who we've already got, the, um, the Coca-Cola 600, Obviously, we got Dega, and we're looking for a Bristol Night Race. So we've got somebody that has reached out for that. Oh, and Fontana. Not Fontana. Um, Homestead, Miami. Final race of the year um, where they crown the champion. So it's going to be a big year. But I'm excited about Talladega. So just know that you've already been entered if you bought the season already for this year. Once you buy the season, if you have not already, you will be entered to win one of those race packages. And, yeah, we'll see who can do it. And then obviously, guys, if you don't win and you end up going to Talladega, 
come see us. I mean, we'll be there. But that's just, you know, you have to get your own tickets at that point. So, anyway, let's get on our recap from Saturday. It wasn't the greatest day, but we turned a profit. There was just a couple of bad beats that we took. Um, start off with <clears throat> the NBA, Chicago Bulls and the Portland Trail Blazers. Bulls plus three and a half, Blazers plus two and a half. The Blazers got beat. The Bulls were where they needed to be and went cold at the wrong time. And <laughs> the thing is, as the Bulls were going cold throughout the game, so were the Knicks. If the Bulls got hot, so or yeah, so did the Knicks. So it was just kind of tip for tat. Levine would do his thing, start playing good defense, and defense would fall off, but he was still good offensively. Then they would go completely cold, and so would the Knicks. So it stayed right there, and then all of a sudden at the end, they go cold and the Knicks go hot. The Bulls come back and bring it back around to reality for a little while, but they still end up losing by 10. So we did not take it there. The Blazers just got beat. They got beat, from, in my opinion, from start to finish. I didn't watch the game live, but I followed it live, and um, it wasn't good for them. So I don't know what they're going to do about that, that uh, one of those bottom spots right there. The Kings are eating up, you know, that one of those bottom spots. And I don't know. I mean, obviously Lillard, I think, will end up making a difference, but – I mean, good Lord, you got I mean, if you just have one player go down, no matter how dynamic he is, you got to do something. So, uh, Lakers and Grizzlies under 227. That was our easiest one of the day. That one almost became a top play. Easy win there. Celtics, Rockets under 233. That even went into overtime and still easily cashed there. So, like that play. We had the Celtics on the money line, minus $1.05. We didn't take them on the spread, minus one or one and a half, because obviously – just to take him on the money line and lay less juice was there. But the thing is, taking him on the money line was going to be better either way because they would have lost that anyway. They were favored. So even if we would have laid the point, whatever, you'd have still laid a dollar ten, and they lost. So we did the smart thing there. If the, if that, you know, if the Celtics were going to be our wager, which it was, we were doing the smart thing by laying less juice. So that one right there was a bucket away. And it would have changed NBA from, you know, basically dropping a unit or picking one up. So not a great day there. Hate that, but it happens. So then we get into NCAA basketball, and this is where we turn it around and, and made money for the day. Uh, Kentucky minus six and a half. Hey, there have been times we've got, beat, you know, bitten on the hook this year. And there's sometimes that it's going to, you know, the gambling gods give you one back. Kentucky won by seven. So we cash that ticket. Hofstra minus 13. It was an absolute blowout. Uh, Furman minus 20 was a top play. Another easy win. Uh, Duke over 123 in Virginia. That one right there. I say it should have gone into overtime. I got to credit Virginia for the way that they played down the stretch. Um... I, this is the first time that I think I'm ever going to say this in my life. And I cringe at the thought of even saying it. I think Duke kind of kind of got shafted on fouls. I think there were a few times that they, they got fouls called on them that were just, I'm sorry, they weren't. Um, and it sent Virginia to the line. That was a seven-point shift or swing right there in the late minutes. So had it not been for that, I think not only would Duke have won the game, it's still, I can't really say. I really think that at the end right there, what went on, I was really thinking it was going to go into overtime, but it didn't. So I'll take the loss. No big deal. Um, Grambling minus nine. Easy win there. Jackson State minus 17. They got shafted on a foul there in the last 30 seconds that ended up giving up two points, or else they would have covered that. They ended up pushing so they won by 17, so no harm, no foul there. Uh, McNeese and Houston Baptist, that game right there, I have never seen, you know, the, the whole saying, let them play, just let them play. Like, hey, if it's just this little where just they barely bump and it's something only the refs could ever see or notice, let them play. Especially when you've got one team that's blowing the other one out. There were a lot of those. A lot of those, and of course they got, they got just blown over. I mean, you got to do it to some extent, but eventually it's like, God, I mean, how many fouls can you overlook that 
not everything is is like this hidden secret. So that game never got out of play, out of pace. That was the thing. You're going to bet something under 171 in college basketball, you know it's going to be high scoring. But eventually that pace has to slow down a bit. Never want. I mean, it's like they never took their foot off the and didn't have to. It's like whistles didn't exist and halftime lasted 15 seconds. So it went over. They scored 180. I just feel like had there been just a handful of those fouls called, just the break in rhythm could have shifted this game 20 points. And, I mean, because you don't understand when teams are hot, that's why, you know, coaches hate for the opposing team to call foul. They hate for, you know, stuff to – or call timeout. They hate for fouls to come. They hate for turnovers. They hate for media timeouts. They want that rhythm to stay up and down, never letting go because the crowd's in it, they're in it, and they're hyper-focused. When you get into that, teams can be dangerous. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. They're still collegiate athletes. They can be dangerous. That's exactly what happened today, and that cost us. But a 4-3 in one day there, but we won the top place. We picked up, you know, three units. So we still had a good day. Still picking up roughly two units. I said we don't use units, but we say that whatever your normal premium everyday wager would be, that's our premium plays. We consider that a unit, and then top plays three units so a winning day a profitable day we'll take it so let's see what we can go out there and do for sunday nascar card fifty dollars do not miss out it is by far the most profitable sport running right now and i have the number one guy in the business bar none giving the picks so that if you want to get in on the promotion like if you missed it last time make sure you jump on that uh, five people. We'll choose them all tomorrow. Um, and then if you have already bought the NASCAR season, congrats, you're entered to win Talladega. Um, if you have not and you do buy it, we will enter you to win. And then that will be, that's going to run for this week. So up until next race, we're going to run that. And that way we can, we want to announce everybody, um, on next week's race card or on next week's race video. So but let's do a free play, and then we'll be done for the day. Sorry for the long video, guys, but that's what you do. That's why you haven't seen me in a little while, because I've been handling all this stuff. Um, I'm going to go with another under tomorrow. And the thing is, I feel like it's almost too obvious. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to go with an underdog. I'm going with Georgetown plus two. And you can take the money line on this one if you want to, as I think Georgetown is not overall the better team. I think in a lot of situations, Xavier would probably be the better team. And I think that is why they're favored by two here on the road. But I think that Georgetown's better coached, number one. I'm not going to take credit away from Patrick Ewing. But I think guard play is going to be key in this game because both teams don't necessarily turn the ball over a lot. Um... And they're both fairly good at forcing turnovers when they're when the teams are somewhat evenly matched. Here's the thing. I think guard play, as far as being able to push pace when you want to and make those smart passes to get open lane shots, you know, driving in left side mainly, because Georgetown loves to hit that left side, and when they can get hot driving in from that left side, they are just as dangerous as anyone in the country. That, and I think the perimeter defense is going to be a thing that – isn't going to be the most prolific thing in this game from either side. So I think whichever team can kind of solidify themselves as the dominant force when it comes to perimeter defense in this game, which I think that it's not going to be a 3-2 zone. I think it's going to probably come man-to-man -man play, which both teams can run both. I think Georgetown does transitional better going back and forth. And I think because of their speed and their low to the ground, their agility, I think that they're going to be able to have the slight advantage when it comes to that perimeter defense and not letting um, their opponent get scorching hot from outside. So I do think they'll have the advantage there, which obviously they'll get the advantage from three as well, you know as well. If they're if they're not the you know ugh, if Xavier's not the one with the standout perimeter defense, and then I think that the guard play is going to allow to burn some of that clock, get that wide open you know shot into the lane. 
make less turnovers, and then you're going to be backed by the home crowd. And what is, you know, two teams that do not like each other. It, it's a rivalry, as good as rivalries get in mid-majors, in my opinion. Some people may not agree to that, but if you go back and look at Georgetown Xavier over the years, it's not every year that you get these teams as evenly matched as they are. So I'm going to take Georgetown. Give me Georgetown plus two. That's a premium play. I bet that one just a few minutes ago. First college basketball play I locked in for Sunday. Sunday's card will be out um, probably around mid-morning or so Sunday. Race card to follow. Go jump on. Again, sorry for the long video, but I can't wait to see everybody in the contest. And uh, we're growing by the day, guys. See ya.